whom we're extremely pleased to share with you about what we call back to basic. That's what's worked for keeping students on their educational pathway. As most of you have done like we did here at HCC, uh, we adopted a completion agenda several years ago. And from that effort, we are glad to say that we've seen over a 40% uh, increase in our completion and certificate rates here at the college. And hopefully today you'll get a feel about one of the tools that's been instrumental in helping us obtain that type of success. Uh, but before we begin, let me give you a little look and glance at Hillsborough or HCC. If you want to find out more details about the college at hccfl.edu. Now, let's get back to talking about today's session. As most of you have gone through what we call the accreditation process, during that process, we had to create a quality improvement plan, which is called QDP. During that creation of that plan, we found a lot of things that directed us to creating what we call our student success towards SLS 1106. You can see from the data on the screen, 23% of our first time ending students stopped out after their first term enrollment and 41% of those left after the first year and did not return. With such a high attrition rate, we tried to determine what we could do, what we could do to impact and turn that trend around. In doing so, we saw that it was imperative that we had to have students that would, students need an educational plan. And if they did have a plan, the likelihood of their success increased tremendously. Therefore, led to the creation of Hulk GPS. And I guess you ask, what is Hawk GPS? I always like to use the analogies that I'm sure all of us used our phone before to putting our GPS system to find a destination. But the same thing applies for here, only difference here is we want students to find a pathway to graduation. I am not going to read what's on the screen for you though, but it does, does, it does provide opportunities for students to pursue career paths, to learn about career information, learn about financial forecasting, and also allow students, more importantly, to explore different degree options for required courses. And it talks about those uh, graduation completion rates, timeline, and the cost that they incur for doing so. All of this is sponsored and powered by our power with our corporate partner, Eginet. With that, I invite you to sit back and let's watch a video, brief video. And then after the video, uh, Andrew Brown from Edgenet will come on and talk a little more about the product. And before we start the video, I forgot one thing, as always. I want to encourage you that if you do have Q&A or questions at the end, use the Q&A uh, uh, signal, I mean, Q&A uh, tab to auto submit to submit your questions and we'll try to address them at the end of it. Uh, Kayla, would you run the video? Last year, HCC partnered with EduNav, a company focused on helping higher education institutions maximize student success. Branded to HCC as Hawk GPS, graduation planning system, we launched this new technology to help you plan, register, and collaborate with your advisors on your academic pathway. As soon as you become a student at HCC, Hawk GPS will build an optimal pathway that will help you stay on track and graduate on time. You also have the opportunity to create what-if scenarios to explore different degree plans and career pathways.
With your map in front of you, you can move courses around, browse additional course options, or adjust the number of credit hours you want to take. Hop GPS's Optimize feature will then verify that any changes are acceptable against degree requirements. If your plan is not valid, Hop GPS will suggest updates to ensure you stay on track to graduate. Hop GPS builds a unique plan for you based on your academic history and degree plans and updates in real time as circumstances change. The system provides a weekly schedule view where you can select preferred campuses, as well as set class day and time preferences. Hawk GPS will then recommend optimal class sections that meet both degree requirements and your schedule preferences. You also have the opportunity to browse all classes available. Days, times, and faculty names will be available to help you make informed decisions. Once your schedule is set, you will register right from your plan. Going forward, our main goal for launching Hop GPS is to improve the support we provide you. To help stay on track and graduate on time while at HCC. For the latest news and support resources, see our Hop GPS webpage. Uh, thank you. This is Andrew, um, Andrew Brown. I'm with, with EDGINAV and uh, we've been working with uh, Dr. Atwater and his team now for a few years and they've been really instrumental in helping us think about right technology for York and um, their energy and enthusiasm for driving completion, um, academic completion as well as kind of career progression for their students has been Kind of an energy that we've 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 benefited from much as a company um, and been working with them on this technology. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you see on the screen a, an iPhone with a, with an image of Edgenav. You could you could think of there's a there's a real metaphor here where you know in an iPhone you decide what your route is. You start in location, decide your destination, then iPhone and Google Maps will will pick that route. Edgenav sort of does the same thing, but for, for students. And so specifically, a student will work with EDGENAV, define what their declared major is, and then we will help automatically to create the academic pathway for that student. And I'll go into the product itself and show you how this all works. Um, so I just want to make sure um, the, the, the software that we have um, is, a, is a SaaS solution. Um, it's unique in that it maps out a student pathway all the way to completion. In this case, the student's declared major is um, administration of justice. You see that here. Um, what you see here is a, is a timeline. And in that timeline, you see completed courses for the student with their grades. You see the current semester with the courses for that semester. And then you see a semester by semester view um, of courses that end up at the point of graduation. So in this case, the student is declared for administration of justice. You see the courses for the current semester, the spring, the fall, and the, and the spring 2022. Um, you know, this is um, a, a technology that helps not just map out this path to an academic achievement, so in this case, administrative justice, also starts to provide the student critical information to help think about their career kind of goals. And in this case, the career goals are specific jobs that link to that degree with compensation. And one of the things that we're doing with, um, with Hillsborough Community College now is to essentially map that out to be local data. Um, so one thing I'd like to say is, and this is a, an important point for the software, this is an automatically generated plan. Um, the plan is auditable and it's registrable. So providing the student is within the registration period, um, they can click on register and then they'll automatically be registered for the, for the courses. Um, but the, the, the beauty in the software is really in kind of the flexibility. And so a student get presented this plan when they start up EDGENAV, uh, but then they may want to make changes. So let's go ahead and make some changes. 
Um, I'll start off by uh, moving a course from one spring semester to the fall semester. Um, I'll also start off by um, showing the whole schedule and I'll block out, I don't want to work on Saturdays as a student, I don't want to work on Mondays, and then I'm going to change kind of the number of terms and I'm going to number of credits for each term, apply that to all, all terms and save. So you can imagine as a student faced with the challenge of building the academic plan, that's an incredibly complex set of changes to make and then work out what are the implications um, for my academic pathway. Um, so with EDUNAV, we've made those changes. Now we click on a button up here and now EDUNAV is analyzing the potential pathways for that student now to remain on track to complete. And then what we've done is presented information to the student, um, which shows a number of courses that have been changed. There's an economic impact of those changes. And then the question is, student, do you want to fix my plan or not? We are now going to fix the plan. And so what that does now is it maps out a new pathway for that student um, keeps them on the pathway to graduation, adds another semester and adds additional cost. And then the student can decide, is that the path they want to take? If they do, and then with the registration period, they can click on registration. Um, so again, that's kind of principle of what we're doing here is giving the student the information to make the best decisions, the best choices for them. Um, another kind of option you have to is change your declared major. Think about the complexity of changing uh, kind of what your declared major is. We're going to change the declared major here. We're going to change from administration justice to computer animation, which is quite a diversion, obviously, from administration justice. We're going to apply that. And now EDUNAV, which is going to take seconds, not minutes, not hours, not days, is going to come up with a new academic plan for that student. And it's going to map out from today, given all the completed credentials for that student all the way to the end point of a new degree in computer animation. And not surprisingly, this adds time to the pathway to graduation. It also presents the student with cost. We're going to click yes. And now you see a very different pathway with computer animation as an end goal. So you can see that the tool itself is not just keeping the student on track with whatever their goal is, it's also making decisions very quickly. And the student will work alongside the advisor um, with their EDUNAV plan, giving the advisor the best information to help them provide the student with additional insights and advice. So I'll now come out of the um, session for the screen. I'll go back to the slides. And I'll move on to the next slide. The progression of EDUNAV is not just to think about academic planning. We're now sort of entering into a world of career planning and, you know, Hillsborough Community College has very specific goals in the area of retention and completion and Dr. Atwater just discussed that. They also have goals in the area of job creation um, for, for students. So making sure that students graduate within one year um, and have jobs 90% of the time. And not surprisingly, you know, all research points to why students go to college. Um, two main reasons. One is to have academic achievement, build skills and get a job. The other is to um, it said find employment. What we're doing at EDUNAV is thinking about how to move beyond kind of academic planning and move into academic and career planning. So we talked a little bit a few minutes ago about the career information. We're also building skills audit tools which enable the student to manage their pathway to building certain skills and then ultimately we'll have that factored into the plan. So again we're broadening the scope of planning for the student entering both kind of career planning to combine with academic planning. And with that, I'll uh, pass it over to um, Dr. Charles, who will talk a little bit more about the implementation. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, my name is Kayla Charles. I'm with HCC. I have sort of led the implementation of EDUNAP here. So I wanted to briefly go over how we implemented. Um, we were tasked with an 18 month time frame, um, and I'm proud to say that we met that goal. Um, we really started in about January of 2019, um, and we broke out our implementation to a number of phases. Um, we had over 200 programs we needed to implement. So we started out with 21 of our associate in science degree programs. Um, we started with those AS degrees because they're more lockstep, a little bit easier for us to plan, um, as well as they had dedicated advising staff that we were able to work with. 
Um, so we worked with those plans um, and we implemented them for a group of students, about 400 students um, in July of 2019. We then moved on to phase two, which you see in the blue here, uh, where we expanded to the majority of our AS degree programs. And we also added some of our first AA pathways and that's our associate in arts pathways. Um, we started um, with our guaranteed transfer programs that we have. Um, we have a FUSE program with the University of South Florida and the IGNITE program with FAMU. Um, so it's very important for those students to stay on track so they can enter into the four-year program of their choice. Um, so we implemented those in June of 2019. So that expanded um, HOC GPS out to about 4,000 students. Then we moving into phase three, uh, we actually accelerated our phase three timeline and split it out into two parts. Um, and that was because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So in March of 2020, um, we were grappling with how we we're gonna better serve our students remotely. Um, and one of the tools um, is obviously Hot GPS. Um, as was mentioned, it's, it's really helpful for an advisor to be able to work over Zoom um, with a plan, um, with a student. Uh, so we wanted to give that option to as many students as possible, as early as possible. So we focused on, our, on all of our associate in arts pathways, um, and we actually deployed those in April of 2020, um, ahead of our fall 2020 registration period. And then we finished up with our, what we called phase 3.1 with the remaining college credit certificate programs, a few more associate and science degree programs. Um, and we finished everything up there um, in about June of 2020. So that leaves us with where we are now. We have 221 degree programs available on Hot GPS. 90% uh, of our degree seeking students have a plan available to them. And as Andrew said, that plan is automatically generated. As soon as they access that system, they have a plan. Um, so 27,000 students, more than 27,000 have already accessed a plan at least once. And we have over 11,000 students who have registered for at least one class using Hot GPS. Uh, moving forward, we're actually going to be rolling out Hot GPS as our registration platform for all students starting this summer. Um, so it's really going to be across all of our students, degree seeking or non-degree seeking, are all going to be using this platform. Students who have a plan are going to see that plan before they register. So it's really bringing us um, full circle um, with Hot GPS here. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Ray. And you're muted, Dr. Ray. There we go. I was hoping we wouldn't have to say in this session, you're muted. Uh, student feedback has been great. Uh, students really enjoy the program. Uh, as you see on the screen, uh, they enjoy the user interface. They really like the features. They think it's meant much easier than as this is old way of doing this. Uh, it's fast and easy and uh, they love it. Well, one of the best comments that we have came from one of our board of, uh, our first board of student trustee, uh, student trustee, uh, student board of trustee member. And she said that she wished that she had that when she started HTC. So that was a great selling point for all the administration and the board. It's had an impact on advising. That's been very good. Kayla mentioned, uh, mentioned that we moved up the implementation of oh, GPS. At the beginning, when at the beginning of the pandemic, when we went to remote operations, and that really helped our students connect, connect in real time with our academic advisors. And as she mentioned, we did uh, conducted Zoom sessions, so the student and the advisor could see the see the uh, Hawk GPS uh, plans online together and and work work together on those. Uh, Hawk GPS combined with the help of advisor really maximizes a student's opportunity to get the best courses uh, for their degree. And while we know that we want all students to uh, meet with an academic advisor, we also know that many students don't, many students self-advise. And so now every student who self-advise has a plan that's gonna to lead to graduation. All right, the feedback that we received from our academic advisor this is extremely good. Now, this is a new process and it's a new tool for advisors and they're still learning how to incorporate this new tool into their advising techniques. But these are some of the things that uh, that advisors are saying. They're using less, less paper when suggesting coursework. As a former academic advisor myself, I know something that takes 
20 minutes to, to, uh, to 40 minutes is taking much less time and working with students. Students are able to take more of a direct role in the education and then work in conjunction with the advisor. And it's made it much easier for students to collaborate on planning classes with students since it's easier to add recommendations and for different meetings and so forth as Andrew and you share. Uh, now I'll turn it back over to Andrew. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I saw one of the questions in the in the in the chat was around um, are other are other community colleges using um, this product and, and the answer is yes they are. We've we've been working with a number of community colleges, two year schools, as well as four year schools around the country over the last two or three years, um, kind of working in a similar way with with Hillsborough Community College. I mean Hillsborough Community College have, have branded their product Port QPS and they've really helped us create some very interesting capabilities that that we started with them. So for example the the career kind of data capabilities starting at Hillsborough Community College with, with local data. Um, and that's something that is proprietary to them right now. We will be rolling that out. But around the, the country, we're working with Antelope Valley Community College on the West Coast, Riverside Community College District on the West Coast, um, uh, Raritan Valley Community College is New Cousin Vales out in New Jersey, um, Central New Mexico um, Community College in Albuquerque, but a number of two-year schools and love to share that with folks offline. Um, and, and we have seen some success and, and there's some, some data here coming from our specific customers, um, but the, the results in student success as well as organizational efficiency kind of across the, the dimensions you see here. So we're helping students graduate sooner um, with one of our schools has seen a doubling of completion rates, um, persistence has improved. Um, obviously a, a key operating kind of statistic is, you know, are we increasing credit loads? You know, part of the reason why we're helping drive students through quicker is that we're the, through the tool, through managing that student plan um, fairly tightly and managing the students on that path to completion, students are actually also earning more credits along the way. Uh, the advisor efficiencies um, relates to planning. You know, we believe strongly that the advisor-student relationship should be, should be maintained and strengthened. And we think one of the ways to do that is to push power to the student to spend time building a plan, working with EDGINAP, but then they can work with the advisor on sort of additional valuable activities to help make other kinds of decisions. So rather than sitting down with an advisor to build a plan, the student goes to advisor with a plan, with EDGINAP, and that enables an advisor then to spend more time with the student on kind of other activities. Um, and then the last point kind of relates to elimination of credits um, or wasted credits. As you can imagine, you know, many students are opting for courses in some situations which aren't contributing to their most efficient path to graduation. Um, with EDGINAV, that doesn't happen. Um, you know, the, the, the path is set, the credits the student earns keeps them on that best path, that optimal pathway as per Dr. Atwater to get that student to graduation. And with that, you see an elimination of wasted credits. So again, it's creating that efficient route. Again, think about kind of the, the Google Maps analogy you know, Google Maps keeps you on your path, gets you to your destination without taking inefficient detours. And part of what we do is, is, is think about that. So you sort of again get a flavor of how we've been helping our schools. And again, we'd love the opportunity at some point in the future to talk with any of you about that. Um, and I'll pass it back now to, to Dr. Atwater. Well, thank you, Andrew. Well, before we go to Q&A, let me just summarize a couple of things that are very key to us here at HCC. First and foremost, it is very obvious from our research and most all research you find, students with educational and guided educational pathway have a greater likelihood of ret being retained and complete. And our goal, our goal was to make sure that every student that comes to HCC will have an educational plan. And truly this software, which we named, renamed Hawk GPS, will actually provide an opportunity for our students to do that because it is very flexible and very interactive. But more importantly, it really helps with our student success. I'll say this again, we've seen a tremendous increase in our graduation rate. And this tool is just one of the, pro I mean, this tool is one of the products we use to remove the barriers for people to complete and graduate. Uh, I encourage you to contact us uh, I know it's a little difficult to doing it on a virtual environment to actually get a good sense of what the product is, but 
if you had to describe it in simple terms, I just say, pull out your phone, put in a destination, and it will guide you there. Well, we say come to HCC, pick a pathway or a major, put in a major destination, and Hawk GPS will guide you there. With that, I'll stop and we'll open it up for questions again, Q&A. Uh, you can do that if you can. I don't think people are able to talk and we'll respond to those as they come in to us, okay? Do you see any, Caleb or Ken? So we did get a question uh, regarding student buy-in and how students have acclimated to the change of the system. And so what I will say is when we started going through implementation, um, we knew it was going to be very important to make sure this is something that was going to work for students. So we did student focus groups um, on each of our campuses. Um, we demoed the product. We got their feedback as we were developing the plans. We also got their feedback on the branding. Um, so it's our students who came up with Hawk GPS. Um, so we got their input throughout that process. And then, of course, we are doing the follow up surveys um, and gathering some information, which Dr. Ray had discussed some of that. Um, and they really seem to mostly find it intuitive. Um, there are training videos that we point them to within the platform. Um, so in all of our documentation and as we've launched it, we had a whole separate work group that talked about communications and we were very strategic in what we sent to students and made sure they were aware this change was coming and where to go for additional help. Um, EdgeNav, the platform itself, um, has kind of a knowledge base feature and a chat feature that they help support. And then further things get escalated back to us. And so we reach out to those students and help them. Um, but for the most part, um, they've really been able to understand the system. Um, they're used to doing these types of things and working with these types of systems and, and they found it fairly art intuitive. One other thing I actually wanted to talk about on the advising side of things, something I, I actually had meant to mention um, something that was important to us was having dedicated resources during the implementation. Um, so we actually had an academic advisor assigned permanently for a year. He worked with me here in my office. Um, and that was critical to having that advisor buy-in as well, um, making sure they were a part of the process and also just having that dedicated resource allowed us to actually get these plans implemented in a timely manner. And we do have another question that just came in. Yeah, we do it. Yeah, Sorry. Okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So does HCC have programs that have course options to complete degree requirements? A generic example, take either Econ 1301 or Econ 1302. If so, can Hawk GPS adapt to recognize options and if one of those options has been completed? That's a great question. Um, I can answer some of them and Andrew may want to want to jump in as well from, from his side of things. Um, so Hawk GPS does plan recommendations and in the case where we do have a requirement that has multiple options like that, um, that's all pulled in straight from our degree audit system. And now what we can do is on top of that, put in what they called advising smart plan rules. And so if there's a recommended option, for example, for a general education requirement, we can recommend that option. Um, but there's also an indicator within the plan for the courses that have multiple options. So the student knows they need to go in and make an active choice. And Andrew may want to elaborate on that. Yeah, I mean, um... Dr. Charles brings up kind of something that we think is a core differentiating capability within our planning kind of tool. And so we, we incorporate institutional best practices into the, the plans. And the way we've historically done that is a way different than the way we're transitioning now. So we've historically kind of gone down a path of um, leveraging advisor input, creating advisor rules, and then incorporating that into our algorithms. So there's, there's a lot of deep technology in the product. Um, that creates those automatically generated plans. There's a capability we're introducing now called automatic um, smart plan rules. And the way we work with automatic smart plan rules is when we connect to your data, connect to your SIS and your degree audit data, look at student history, we create rules for every single program based on that best path to completion. And so for every program in your system, um, we will create a few dozen rules, typically 40 to 50, that essentially dictate and inform how the academic pathways are created. Um, and we got quite good at that. Um, we feed that information back to the advisors, they provide sign off on those rules, and then they get incorporated into our algorithms. But that's all done automatically um, using technology and enables for a very fast deployment. 
And so Eginev now from a deployment standpoint has shifted from kind of you know, 18 months to 24 months down to six to 12 months um, because of these automatic um, smart plan rules. Yeah, well, in, in the answer, Kayla, to the question is that does it recognize options? Yes, if they're in the rules. <laughs> Simply yeah. as what Andrew just said. Or within your degree audits. So even if we didn't have rules right. overlaid for recommendation, if it's in your degree audit within your SIS, it's it's accommodated. And that's really the great thing about it. Anything else we have? I don't see anything else. Do you, Kayla? I do not. Okay. I did also post in the public chat a link to our website that has the Hawk GPS video, since I know there was a little bit of, a, of an echo or a delay with that. So please check that out and reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks, Kayla. I was going to say we could post a link to the video since that it was a little slow with the buffering process coming through. Hey, listen, we want to thank you for, for tuning in, and we're glad to share again. We have an open invitation to reach out to us uh, anytime, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, hold it, we have another question. Can you read that, Kayla? Yes. So it says, you mentioned students and advisors have provided positive feedback. Any faculty feedback on the system? Great question. Um, we have done multiple sessions um, with faculty as well to gain some input on the system. Um, I don't think we have any formal feedback and as far as like results of a survey, right? Um, but we do have had some informal feedback and they were brought in, especially for those um, department chairs and program managers. Um, they were involved throughout the implementation process so that we made sure that those degree paths were built with their recommendations in mind. So. And let me add to that, Kayla, as part of the uh, SLS 1106, the class that all first time, first time in college students need to take, part of the requirements for that class is for students to have an academic plan and the faculty in that, in that group really enjoy having a Hawk GPS as a, as a tool to help students, uh, uh, help students generate those plans. Yes, we that's a great point. Yeah. Go ahead, Kayla. Can you see the other question? Yes, I'll read the next question. It says, are you all really able to see what courses are holding up students to complete a degree? So I think, Andrew, I don't know if you were able to be able to talk about the reporting features um, of EDGENAV and us being able to view that information. Yeah. Um, so if you can imagine the, the, the first step of, of Hawk GPS is really building plans for students. Um, the, the, the next step which is where we've already progressed now, is really leveraging the data um, that's embedded in the planning information. We have an incredibly rich trove of data that highlights students' plans from now all the way through to completion. And so you can build up kind of aggregate data for all students. Um, that can help you kind of and inform kind of forecasting and operational planning decisions. Um, and we have tools and dashboards, as you can imagine, um, that feed out and read out that information to decision makers, whether it's advisors. So advisors can see collective data on all the students um, that they're responsible for. You know, which students are on track, off track, which students um, have developed a plan, need to develop a plan. And then there's tools for administration and dashboards for administration that kind of aggregates information across all advisors and all students. Again, informing decisions operationally for thinking about kind of where are the bottlenecks in courses, course management, um, and then helping you input um, provide input into demand forecasting. But that richness of data is where kind of the, 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 the product almost goes above and beyond what you've seen today. Um, and that's sort of, you know, for much longer discussion. Um, but that's kind of where EdgeNav in some ways differentiates itself so even more than just on the planning side. Anything else I see? I guess before we close then, unless we get another question, I will tell you that, let me just tell you from the institution standpoint on how much of a partner that EDGENAV has been with the college. You know, internally, when you're working with outside people, working with your staff, 
Uh, my staff tell me it's almost their concerns is almost like working with our staff and we consider them a part of our DNA and making this a reality. More importantly, as you can imagine, this is a process that's constantly being developed and upgraded. I am sure that our Huck GPS system will look entirely different in the next year or two as we progress down this pathway for our students. So we encourage you, I mean, if you if you want more specific follow-up or looking for certain things, please feel free to contact any of us and we'll be more than glad to share. Again, hearing no more questions, I want to thank you for joining us for this session. And I know we're just about five minutes early, I think, in, uh, in doing so, but we want to thank you again and come visit us at HCC. The weather's great in Tampa for those of you who are having bad weather. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.